we've had a number of questions come in in the last couple of hours about uh, convolution and the Gaussian filter in particular for the assignment that's due tonight. Sorry, this is coming so late, uh, but hopefully this can uh, uh, catch a few more of you who've asked uh, questions. Um, th so this, what I've written here is this is the uh, equation that we have uh, for our Gaussian filter. Our, our Ws are our coefficients for the Gaussian and the X is uh, our uh, vector that we're trying to uh, trying to filter. So let me go ahead and draw that out. So x x is here. We're going to imagine it's it's some number of cells or some number of uh, vector elements here, and we'll number those zero to l minus one. So l is uh, the length of uh, of x. And, and what we're saying by this equation up above is that for x prime, um, we're going to set things up such that x prime is exactly the same length. And uh, when we uh, are computing, say, uh, this value here at time t, what, what we mean by that is that uh, there it's a, it's a weighted sum of the elements of uh, x, and in particular, uh, uh, this element here, uh, x of t, uh, has a has a weight of uh, uh, it's it's w three. Uh, this one here uh, contributes as well. This is a, a w two. This is uh, w one and uh, w zero here. And and of course we also have uh, the other side. So we've got three of those coming in from the other side. So um, so this element uh, that that sits. Uh, right here, it gets to see a, essentially it builds a mixture of uh, all of the local elements in the original X uh, vector. Now, if I shift over to, if I shift over to another element, uh, all of these, uh, all of these uh, convolution uh, coefficients shift as well. So let's imagine uh, taking these, and bringing them over to say this cell right here, that actually worked out fairly well. Um, so I lost my arrowheads, but we're, but these are all influencing. This is some other t prime, say, and and again, uh, this element that's sitting right here at t prime, it it gets uh, it's it's a mixture of the the local uh, values uh, from the uh, x vector. So uh, it's uh, x at t prime times w3, uh, et cetera. And, and so, so the question is, how do we, how do we actually compute this uh, generally? Um, there are a couple ways to do this. One could imagine writing a, uh, a for loop where you say uh, something along the lines of uh, uh, for uh, t in range uh, L, so that's going to give you values from zero to L minus one. Uh, and then we, we can compute exactly what we've written out here. So X prime uh, of T uh, equals, et cetera. So, so, that's, so that's one, one possible approach. Uh, computationally, this is not terribly efficient. We're actually doing iteration in Python, and Python is an interpreted language. Uh, and these vectors that we're working with are on the order of, of 15,000 elements. Uh, and rather, what we'd really like to do is, is ultimately push the computation down into the NumPy uh, library, which, has, which is implemented in, in Fortran, believe it or not. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, the uh, the other thing is that what the other question we have to answer is what happens when we try to compute this element right here. So at time zero, certainly I've got w three here and w four is right here, etc. But but where does where does the uh, w two come from? And 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 so that we we have to construct it from somewhere. Uh, w2, w1, and, and w0 have to come from somewhere. And, and the way that we're going to handle this uh, is through padding. And this is something that we talk about in the implementation. 
Um, so the padding process uh, looks like this. So we've got X and it starts here. And it's there, whoops, that did not work. There we go. And uh, what, what we wanna do is deal with the, the three elements in this particular example that, that are missing over here. So, so that's where this padding comes from. So we're going to uh, transform X into some other, uh, say X bar, uh, where, we, uh, where we have all of these elements here. Well, that didn't work out. Try that. But then we add three more. We do this on, on both sides. And, and the way we add those, those three is, is that we take the value here and copy it into these elements here. And, and likewise on this end. What that, what that means is when we go to compute our X prime, so that's down, down here. X prime is going to be the original length L. What that means is we can, uh, we have our W3 here. Uh, W2 pulls from this padding. W1 also, and W0 also pulls from that padding. Okay. so. Uh, so that fundamentally solves uh, the, the question of the missing values. Um, this for loop changes just a tiny bit. Uh, so, so now it is, uh, let's iterate over time again. So for T in range uh, L, uh, the question is what is X prime of T? And this is going to be equal to uh, W0 times uh, our X bar uh, at time T. So that is, so for uh, element zero, that is, uh, that, that is coming from this location right here. And, and then we go on from there. So w, w1 times x bar of t plus one, the next one over. W2 x bar uh, t plus two. And we end up with w6 x bar t plus six. So, so this works out just right on, on the, uh, on the left hand side, on the left, on the right hand side, we contemplate pulling in this element here. Uh, uh, at at this point, uh, t is equal to l minus one. So when we add t to six, then we have uh, uh, l uh, l plus five, uh, and in our vector. Let's see, let's blow this up a little bit. So the indices here are 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, and this is uh, L plus 2 here. Uh, L plus 3 is here, plus 4, plus 5 is right there. And, and so uh, on, this, on the computation of the very last element here, this particular L, uh, term uh, refers to uh, right here. Okay, so so that's all well and good, but as I said, doing a for loop of this magnitude, uh, of this length, is very expensive, uh, and uh, and we can contemplate doing this in a uh, a different way. And let me start by um, let's let's make one observation here. Let's assume. Let me make a copy of all of this first off. I can bring it down below. All right, so that mostly uh, cleaned things up. So let's imagine for an instant for the instant that uh, 
that uh, W3 is, is uh, non-zero, is something interesting, but all the other Ws are zero. So, uh, so if, if just looking at this, this for loop up here at t equals zero, what that, what that means is that the only term that is non-zero, and I don't actually have it written in here, but let's go ahead and add it, is that w3 term, and that's x prime uh, t plus three. Okay. So, so assume, assume for the instant that uh, w's, all w's are zero, w3 is non-zero. And, and what that means is that we are copying uh, this value for, for the, this zeroth element. We're just copying this down and multiplying that by w3. And, and likewise, for the next one over, we're just doing a, a, a copy with that w3 scale, et cetera. So what we can do is actually turn this into a, a, a vector equation. Um, so let me let me start to write that out down below here. So so oh and and of course on on the very far end it's a copy down but multiplied by w three. So the idea here is that x prime is going to be a sum of uh, a bunch of things. Uh, so one is multiplied by w0, w1, w2, which for the instant are all zeros, w3, uh, w4, w5, and w6. So w3 is the only interesting one, so we'll write that in. Um, the question is for x bar, which elements do we actually want of x bar? So, so for the w3 case, we want to discard the, the things that we've padded and that corresponds to uh, L index three out to index uh, L plus three. So L, L plus three refers to here, but remember indexing it's inclusive of three and exclusive of L plus three. So, so this, so this strips out an entire vector for us. It's 15,000 elements long in, in our example. Uh, and this multiplication that we're, that we're implementing, so we're multiplying W3, a scalar, by this, uh, by this vector, that multiplication, it still involves a for loop, but, it's, but it happens down in the low level, much more efficient library. Okay, so, so that's W3. Let's imagine, let's ignore W3 now and let's uh, imagine it's zero, um, but, uh, but W2 is something interesting. So what that means is that uh, the zeroth element in X prime is going to receive uh, input from the, the two element from X bar. This is X prime here. And, uh, and the one element is going to receive from, from three, the two element from, from four, et cetera. And the very last element receives input from, from this here. So we've shifted over in our X bar vector by, by one to the left. So W2, we can write this in vector form. What, what we wanna do is clip out uh, this vector right here. And if we structure it right, it's exactly the same length as our uh, X prime. So let's do that. So that is W2 by X bar. And now we're starting not at three, we're starting at two. And we're going to uh, L plus two exclusive. And if you, if you work this out, just going through those different cases, there's a definite pattern. Unfortunately, I didn't leave myself quite enough space. X bar one to L plus one. And this is uh, X bar uh, zero to L. And it, and it works the other way uh, 
over here. So I encourage you to work out uh, all of those cases. Uh, this is six to L plus six. Okay, so, so we can, we could just write this as, as one big equation in, uh, in uh, NumPy, uh, but we can also uh, imagine doing an iteration, in, but instead of iterating over, over T, we can iterate over the index of our Gaussian filter. So, so that becomes something along the lines of for uh, F in range uh, seven and uh, you'll, you'll want X, X prime to be just to be initialized as zeros. So it's, it's a, a, a big vector of zeros and then X prime gets added to uh, each of these terms in, in order. Okay, so, so that's, that's the fundamental idea. Um, I'll leave the rest of the implementation to, to you. Um, but we are, we are really doing, uh, actually, actually there are three nested for loops here. Uh, there's one for the different attributes that we're smoothing, uh, and then there's one for uh, for our different features, our Fs, and, and then hiding down uh, inside of just one of these terms, there's also a for loop, but that is uh, happening within uh, the NumPy array. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. There, there are other ways to, to uh, make this even more efficient. You can do all of the features at once, uh, but that starts to get into a little bit more complicated indexing because now your X bars are matrices instead of vectors.